So the other um, option in terms of going in and editing text that is really effective is using outlines. You can get them by going under Type, Create Outlines, or uh, you can right click and do Create Outlines. Either one will do. Creating outlines converts your type from text, which you can edit as text, to shapes, which you can edit as shapes. So here, um, now that this is a shape, uh, if I wanted to go in and, and say, change um, just the length of the eye, I would just have to use the direct selection tool. And this allows me to go in and create a, a very long, long letter. So let's say I wanted to do that with the I and the M. I can do that here. If I wanted to kind of change the stroke, let's just uh, select this letter as a whole. Let's just drag around it with the direct selection tool. So again, I could add a stroke to it. Let's just pick something a little bit different. And I collapse the glyphs for a moment. And now that it's there, I could go in and I could add a different point size. I could make it a dashed line. And this is what the dashed line looks like. So it actually kind of looks like a lifesaver in one of those flotation devices they throw out. Um, I could also go in and change it to something a little bit more artistic. So I could go to the brush tool and if I go to window brushes, it brings up the brushes palette and I can go in, open a new brush. Right now I have just these kind of defaults. This one's not going to look great. That one looks okay, but maybe it should be a little bit smaller in terms of point size. That one looks very odd. But I can also go in and add a, a different brush from a different brush library. So I'm going to go open brush library, artistic, artistic chalk charcoal pencil. And with this, I can, whoops, and I have the wrong thing selected. So let's go back. Make sure only the O is selected. And I can change how that outline looks by, I'm gonna turn off dashed line. And let's make it, uh, make it black. So I can add different dashed line there so that I get something that looks, looks different. So that's the, a kind of chalk charcoal. You can try as many as you want until you get the one that uh, works for you. Or you can open a different brush library. So if I go to artistic uh, ink, I get a different set. That will give me a different kind of look to the outline. So I can also go in and change the stroke size, so make it more or less. And each one will give me something slightly different. If you want this to apply to, by default, when you create outlines for text, uh, you'll notice that what, you, what it does is it groups everything together. So we have layer one. Uh, I don't know what this path is. Oh, it's just something random, so I can delete it. And you can see the text is grouped together. And for the more complicated letters, like the, the E, where it has a, a little white space inside. And if I go in, let's just select the group as a whole. Sometimes it's easier to do these things from the layers palette. Uh, if I have a fill color, then you can see that uh, if the E wasn't a compound path, then let's just select the E. Right click 
release compound path. And you can see what would happen would be that the E just gets filled in. You still have that second path, but they're not being used together. So I could go in and very easily create an E with that black filled in. I could do the same thing with the P. That's also a compound path, and so is the O. It's just a matter of selecting them. And sometimes it's easier to do this from within the layers palette. And it's also good for organization, just to get in the habit of going in. This is my text layer. So if I were adding other el graphic elements, uh, for example, if I wanted, say, this to lay it over a circle, I'm going to change the color of that circle. And I, I want this on a separate layer. Just go here. This is my graphic layer. Call it your artwork layer, whatever works for you. And I'm just going to drag that. So now my text and my graphic are on different layers. If I go right click on this and go arrange, send to back, nothing happens because they're on different layers. But I can drag the layer order. And now I can lock one layer very easily while I'm working on the other so I don't accidentally select it.